evening. I hope everybody's doing really good. We are crazy around here with all, with all of the um, virus stuff that's going on at the moment and the quarantine. We are, um, you know, should be low key, but we are not. We have had, in the last two weeks, I've had um, my five-year-old broke her arm. My seven-year-old had um, a torn meniscus from his sister falling on him, and he had to have surgery. And so I really have been so out of pocket. And you would think, I mean, we're in quarantine. I should be able to get things done. But so all of this goes along really well with what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. We're not going to talk long but we are going to talk a few minutes about some really important things. You know, it's really hard in the midst of things like this. I mean, the quarantine's already hard enough and things are already difficult. But then you have something major happen in the midst of something that's already hard. And so, like, you just feel like things are just constantly coming at you. And you're like, you know, how am I going to keep moving past all these things? And everybody's in the teasy over the um, over the quarantine or over the virus because we don't know, you know, there's always those things that you don't know about it and the economy and all of the things that go along with that. So it's really hard to sometimes have a good outlook and sometimes it's very hard to be positive in the midst of crazy or crisis or just chaos in general. And so I really want to talk to you today about... A book called the energy bus and a few other things that go along really well with that but that's not necessarily pertaining to this to the book but the energy bus is an amazing book I love it um, I actually read it a couple of years ago and I just thought it was kind of fitting for now for the things that we're going through and the issues that we're having at the moment I just think that it's very very important because as I've watched, you know, you watch the news, um, just the regular news, which irritates the snot out of me, and I just try to avoid watching it altogether. And then you've got the Facebook feed, and you've got some people who are, you know, some people are really trying to stay positive through it. Some people make a joke out of it, and then other people are just in a complete teasy, upset, and crazy. So you have to have some sort of balance. Everything in life is about balance. We can't we can't just feed in to the negativity. We can't feed, we can't feed into the horribleness of all of the things. We've got to think, um, we have to really just use our mind to think about what is really true and going, true going on at the moment. So the energy bus, if you have not read it, um, I suggest pause right now, just pause the video. Go to Amazon and order the Energy Bus, and it's just amazing. It really is good, and especially during this time, this would be a perfect time while we're stuck, stuck inside and everything, to be able to read it and really focus on what it's talking about. This man has just negativity. He is just negative all the time. His world just, he feels like it's crumbling all the time. The time the kids are irritated, the wife is aggravated all the time, his car's broken, and now he's gonna have to drive the bus to work. And I mean, like everything, he just he feels like everything is negative, everything is bad, the everybody's against him. He gets on the bus, he has to take public transportation to work. Well, he gets on this bus, and everybody's excited, people are happy, the bus driver starts talking to him, and she's nice, and you're like how can you be so nice? You're driving a bus. You know, you got all these crazy people who are talking to you all day long. Why are you nice? Well, throughout the book, this bus driver is telling this man about having a positive attitude and what that does for you. Like if you're looking at things in a positive way and not giving it the negativity that you really would like to give it, your life is, a mu is much better. You are able to help more people and you're able to help yourself better. You can take care of your family better. There's just something to be said for having a better positive attitude. So some of the things that I have gleaned from the book, I want to 
give y'all a few quotes and a few, um, so some of my most favorites from the book. Number one, your positive energy and vision must be greater than anyone's and everyone's negativity. So we can't just, like there's tons of negativity. Like we all know that now, right at the moment, like so much negativity. We can't feed into all of the negativity. It's really easy when everybody else is negative for us to feed on that and to feel scared ourselves or to pull that negative in and be part of the negative. And, um, and if somebody says something ugly on Facebook, I mean, it's easy to go out there and throw your, spew your thing to the world too and contradict everything that they're saying or gripe about the politics or gripe about this and gripe about that. It's easy to do that, but it's really hard to control yourself and to be able to wild that, that, positivity in a different direction. We don't have to give in to the negativity. We have a choice to make. Our brains are created to make a choice. Now, I've made this illustration before in a couple of other videos, but it's one of those illustrations that it is a must to always realize. And this is something that I do just about every day. <clears throat> I make this little, um, this little stick person. Because at some point, there is always something pulling at me and is going to cause me to either be positive or negative. And we have to decide where all of our feelings are going to go. So this is my little person. These little lines up here, this is everything that's coming at us all day long. This is all of the the Facebook post, all of the news things, the economy's going downhill and the world's coming to an end and we're going into an apocalypse kind of situation. <laughs> so all of those things come into us. We have a choice to make because our brains are made to think. Now, a lot of people, we have actually been taught how not to think. It's really weird to think that, but when you go to school, I mean, we've actually been taught Everybody needs to think the same exact way. Everybody needs to do the same exact thing. Everybody takes the same exact class, the same, like everybody's cut out of this mold. And we've not really been taught to think for ourselves. You think what I tell you to think. You think what I believe, you believe it too. And that's really a scary place to be because that's when, I mean, mankind is made, we are God's highest form of creation. He gave us a mind. He gave us a body. He gave us the ability to, to think of anything, to do anything that we want to do. We don't have to be what anybody tells us to be. We get to choose. Our conscious mind, this is our conscious mind. This is our conscious mind that is able to reject or accept anything that comes into our life. So no matter if, like, we're watching the news, the news is bad. News is the pandemic's horrible and the world's crashing down around us. We have a choice. Once it hits our conscious mind, we have a choice. Are we going to feed into that negativity and have fear and allow that fear to, to be part of us? Or are we going to put it on the positive side and have faith that we know that God can take care of everything. God is still in control no matter what the situation is and no matter what is going on, God is always in control. We have that choice to make. Now, if we make the choice and we put it on the fear side in the negativity side and we're feeding into that negativity, all that's going to do is make us more upset and more um, irritated because we're in fear, because we're not trusting anybody. We're not trusting God. We're not trusting anything. We're just in fear. So that's our conscious mind. So therefore, then we begin to think. We, we emotionalize with it. And we begin to really think on it. We begin to believe that everything is really that horrible. That the finances are really that bad. Or the world is really that horrible. Or the you know people are being shot every day and guns are absolutely terrible. I mean, like 
all the bad things. So we begin to emotionalize that with that and it goes into our subconscious. Our subconscious does not know truth from fiction. You tell it what it needs to know. When you feed it the fear, then it believes that fear is where it needs to stay. It believes that the world is bad and everything's horrible and the world's crashing down around us. But if you have a positive outlook and you realize that God is still in control and no matter what, God's will is going to be done. It may be different than what we think, but God is always in control and we think and realize and emotionalize with the fact that we know God is God. God is bigger than us and God is going to take care of us. And we emotionalize with that and we realize that we truly believe that God is God. Then we that goes into our subconscious. It does not know fact from fiction. So we have the ability to accept whatever we feed it. So if we feed it faith and trust and belief, then it's going to believe that everything's okay that God's taking care of it, and that there's nothing that we have to fear because God's in control, always, all the time. So that's our little person. Put that in your mind because that has been like the biggest. When I saw somebody draw that and draw it out, every day when something comes into my mind that can be negative or it can be positive, like every situation, I don't care if it is when the kid's screaming their head off and like you just really want to like totally lose it, which, you know, is really easy to do. You have that choice to make. Is it going to go to the negative side of aggravation and bad and negative? Or are you going to put it on the positive side and say, okay, let me figure out a nice way that I can make this little person not scream anymore because they may just be tired. They may just be hungry or whatever. And you figure out something to help fix that situation. We can make anything negative or positive. Yes, the economy is not the greatest. But whenever there's something not good in the economy, there is always an opposite to everything. So where there are businesses that are doing horrible and people have been out of work, there is also other businesses are doing great. I've seen two or three friends who have had other jobs that because of all of the layoffs right now, they had not had a job. So they're working at other places because these other places are thriving. If you don't have a job over here, there is another place that doesn't mean you don't have a job somewhere. There are places that are hiring that need help. I mean, even like some of the food places said that they've been doing more work now than they were doing before. They have figured out different ways. They've thought outside of the box and done some different things that that may be a new norm for them. That may be something that's created a whole nother avenue for revenue for them that after this they get to carry on, which still creates more jobs. So we have to think about how we can put things in perspective and we have a choice to make of that. Are we going to move forward and say, okay, this is bad right now, but what can I do that can create a good out of this? My situation may not be great, but I'm not going to focus on the bad. I'm going to focus on what can I do? What can I do to move forward? What can I do to do better and to make things easier? Okay. Number two, Positive energy is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. The stronger it gets, the more powerful you become. The more you focus on positivity, the more it becomes your natural state. So, positive energy is like a muscle. When you work out, your muscles get stronger, naturally. They get bigger, they get tougher, they get stronger. And your, in, your positivity is the same way. The more you throw every situation that comes into your mind, think about your little person, every time those negativities or the thing that just is, whatever it just is, um, you know, it can be anything. Whatever just is, um, the economy just is. It is what it is right now. 
So I can put that on the positive side or the negative side. So if I, if every time those thoughts that can be negative come into my mind, I can throw them to the positive side, it will make life so much easier because then, like I said a minute ago, you begin to focus on the positivity. So therefore you begin to focus on the solution for the problem instead of the problem itself. Because the negativity is gonna bring you to the problem and you're not gonna be able to see past it. But thinking about the positivity side, it throws you into thinking, okay, this isn't that horrible. I can do something with this. This is the direction I need to head in, and this is going to be better for me. So we have to think about that becoming our natural state of being, that we, when we're in this place, we can always come to the natural positive side and continue to grow and do better each time. While being more positive, you attract more positive people in everything that you do. You have to think about the circle of friends you have. When I think about my little person, like this is another little illustration that I saw. Every day I think about the little person. Everything that I, I have done this so often now that I see this little person in my, my head every time I'm thinking of anything. And so I throw it to the positive. I try to keep the negative out of the way. Don't always do it. I'm not perfect. But it, it's a visual in my mind constantly about what needs to be going on in my head. Now, this is another little illustration I saw. Now, we need to learn to audit our circles. This is something that I have never done really well because I think, well, everybody needs to have a friend and everybody needs, like, I need to be that positive influence on somebody. And while that is true, not always can you pull somebody up. Usually the negative is going to pull you down. So it's really hard to keep moving forward if you're living with the negative all the time. Now that's not to say that if your spouse is extremely negative to go off and leave them. I'm just saying that sometimes even a spouse needs to be in circle one and kind of go, okay, I love you with all that's in me, but I've got to keep my dream kind of close to me here. Like, love them, love them, love them, love them. And eventually, they're going to see what you need them to see. But it may take some time. And the more you live out in front of them what you need to be doing and what you need to be living in front of them, the more you do that, then the more they begin to understand and they begin to see the difference in you. When you live on the positive side, they can't help but become more positive. But it really is hard to bring a negative person up. It's easier to get pulled down. So if you have those people in your life that say you have friends who you say, oh, I am so excited. I am going to start my own business and it is gonna be the most amazing business ever. I love it. <coughs> I cannot wait. Throat's getting tickly. It's getting dry. Mm. I cannot wait to tell everybody about it. The people that are your circle one people are going to be the people that say, you really start your own business. You know, you really don't do well with anything. You don't have any consistency. You don't follow through, you don't, you don't really do anything. You're just there. You know, I just, I don't think that's for you. I don't think you can do that at all. Those people are your circle one people and they need to go to circle one and stay there. And those are the people you need to kind of like stick behind you and say, okay, you're being negative and I love you, but you're going to stay over there. Those are the people you just don't spend a whole ton of time with. Circle two people are your people who are, you tell them, oh, I'm going to start a business or, oh, um, I love this dress and I want to buy this dress. And they go, oh, that's so wonderful. I'm so glad you're going to start your own business. I can't do it. I don't, there's no way that I could ever start my own business or I can't ever do something like that. I can't like put myself out there like that, but you're going to do great. You go do that if you want to do that. But I'm, I'm going to stand over here and look at you. <laughs> 
they're not negative, but they're not positive. They're just like on the fence and they just kind of waller, you know, like I'd like to do that, but I can't do that. I, uh, you know, they're very wishy-washy kind of people. Those are your circle two people. They're not horrible to be around, but at the same time, you don't need any indecisive people. <laughs> when you've got important decisions that you're making, don't, don't count on those wishy-washy people to be your person to help you make these big decisions that you may need to make or or to share this major dream with that you have. There may be something that you really want to do. You don't have to bring them along the ride. Sometimes people don't all have to be. Your, every single friend you have doesn't have to be on the ride with you. They can all stand in their own little places. Now, your circle three people are your very encouraging, loving people who you could tell them you were going to do anything. Like, I'm going to be an underwater welder or something. And they would be like, oh, you are going to do so amazing. I cannot wait for you to do that because that's going to be the most awesome job ever. And you're going to be great at it. That is your circle three people because those are the people who are going to love you no matter what. They're going to encourage you no matter what. And those are the people that you can bring close to you and say, okay, I don't know all the details of how I'm going to do this, but I need help. And those people will help you, will listen to you when you're crying or be your all in all kind of people. Like they'll help you do whatever you need to do. That's your circle three people. They may not do the thing with you, but they're going to be that encouragement that you need. So that, we have to think about our circle sometimes. I had a really hard hard time with this because I just wanted to bring everybody. Like everybody needs to be loved on. And while everybody does need a friend and everybody does need to be loved on, you just have to think about not being pulled down by the negative. Because especially, I mean, sometimes family can be some of your most negative people. And you have to just kind of, I love you, <laughs> you know, but not necessarily share every single aspect of every single day with that person <laughs> you have to kind of sometimes um you know you can be surface friends <laughs> or whatever um number three realize that not everyone will board your bus and that's okay the people that get on are supposed to get on and those who don't were supposed to get on another bus or perhaps they would have if they get on your bus, then they perhaps might would ruin your ride. So just keep driving with your vision focused on the road ahead. If you waste your energy on the people who didn't get on your bus, you will have less fuel to pick up the people who want to get on. So whatever vision you have, I don't care if, like you may be living out your total vision, whatever it is that you want to do. You may be living it out every single day, which is amazing and that's wonderful. But there may be something in your heart that you've never really thrown yourself out there to do because you're scared, you know, and, and because you do have a lot of negative people around you saying, mm, I just really can't do that. That's too hard or that's going to cost too much money or that's too, that's totally out of your comfort zone. That's when you have to say, this vision is mine. This is my heart. This is where I need to be. You can do whatever you want to do. That's fine. But I'm going to do what I'm called to do. And it's really hard to be that in that place with some of our friends that are really, um, especially very vocal friends. <laughs> you don't always know where you stand with those people. You know, it's just like they're going to take over your life all the time. And sometimes we just have to kind of be quiet to those people and just go kind of do our own thing and let them do their own thing. They've got a bus to be on. Let them go be on their bus and you drive your bus. And you pick up the people along the way that's going to help you and encourage you and be the people that you need for your bus ride that's going to keep your energy up because all the negative people are just zapping and pulling all of that energy away from you just like a fool in a gas <laughs> fuel in a gas tank. They're just pulling all of that out of you and you don't have enough energy to keep going and doing what you're supposed to be doing and helping and encouraging other people to be able to do their thing. So we have to really think about who are we listening to every single day. Number four, if you're busy complaining, you cannot spend time on the things that you do want. That's highly important. If you're being negative, if your friends over here are being negative, they're again, just like I said a while ago, you're not able to look forward 
and move in the right direction, if you've got all of these things going around your head all the time and all these people who are telling you, no, you can't do that, or you're telling yourself, no, you can't do that because you don't have the money or you don't have the time or you don't have the resources or whatever, all those voices in your head that you're allowing to just be there are keeping you from moving on into the purpose that God has for you. The other day I heard um, this like totally just hit me in such a way that my passions and purpose play a role in humanity's progress. When I heard that, that like struck me at the heart because my purpose, God has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for you. Something's very specific to you. If you don't do or live out your purpose, then you're not living out what God's created you to do. There is somebody along the way. There may be tons of, there may be hundreds of thousands of people that you are supposed to touch, but you don't know that if you don't keep moving and you don't pursue the thing that is in your heart. You have to be able to pursue that. You have to be able to move on. Faith feeds the vision. Sometimes we just have to have faith. Sometimes it may not be that we are necessarily negative, but sometimes we just don't have the faith and the, the trust to believe that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. But that's when we have to have the faith and we have to hold on to it as tight as we can and realize that we just have to keep moving. That every day we have to keep moving and we have to jump past the negativity and all the complaining and all the stuff and move forward and not stop. Number five, a man goes into the village to visit a wise man. The man says, I feel like there are two dogs inside of me. One is positive, kind and gentle, and the other is angry, mean-spirited and negative. They fight all the time. I don't know which is going to win. The wise man says, I know the one that will win, the one that you feed the most. So feed the positive dog. Feed your faith. Starve your fear. You cannot go anywhere if you do not have the faith to keep moving. And if you keep feeding the fear, just like our little picture with our little man, if we keep, the fear is the negativity. We're, we're being negative out of fear because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't see the unknown. The negative side is fear. So do not feed the fear. Feed the faith and keep moving forward and keep pushing on to the next thing. Number six. To run a successful organization, you must learn to manage people's energy, including your own. Growing yourself will grow your business. Read um, leadership books, mindset, some videos. Um, there are tons. And not to say that, like, everybody watching this may not be wanting to grow your own business, but it may be that you may be wanting to just simply move up in the company that you're in, like whatever it is that you're doing, you may just totally enjoy what you're doing and you want to move up and, but you may be afraid to do that. You're, you're afraid that you're not good enough to go do that. But when you start growing yourself in, in your mindset, in what you think about yourself and what you think about others and what you think about just like like this book, The Energy Bus, is all about your mindset. So when you really think about what you want and what you're created to do and you get the positive energy moving inside of you, then you can propel forward and go for the things because you're no longer living in that fear. You're living in the faith. And you're living in that moment of, I can do Whatever God's called me to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. You can move forward. Okay, last but not least, number seven. Growing yourself will grow your positivity. You will see your team grow. You will see growth in your marriage. You'll see growth in your children. You will um, manage your energy better. You will be able to see so much more 
if you're a stay at home mom, like, like I have always been at home with my kids and there are day and I homeschool. And so like there's days that, you know, it's tiring and, and it's easy. Oh my word. It is so easy to get to the end of the day and think what in this world have I accomplished at all? Like the school day was not great. The trying to get any work done was not productive. I mean, I mean, like the last couple of weeks, I feel like all I'm doing is like screaming kids because somebody's hurt. Somebody's not feeling well because they've got something broke. <laughs> so it's easy to feed into that negative side. But by growing yourself, by spending time like reading a book like The Energy Bus or reading, um, this is my really most favorite book ever, is Think and Grow Rich. It actually kind of sort of looks like the Bible. But it is really probably one of my most favorite books because it's all about what you think. Thinking is everything. What we put into our minds, what we think on expands. If we're thinking on negativity, we're going to keep expanding negativity. If we're thinking on positive things, we're going to grow positive things. The Bible talks about that. Everything that we have, any kind of mindset, when you really start listening to personal development, people, anybody that talks about personal development, all of it still stems from the Bible. I don't care if you believe God or not, everything seems, stems from the Bible. Everything. There is nothing that we can do without Him. There is nothing we can do to make our life better without Him. It all comes down to doing what God has called you to do. And he's going to put that desire in your heart. He will not put a desire in your heart that you cannot hold in your hand. But you have to be the one to push past the fear and push past that um, inability to move. I mean, most of the time we get in fear and we stop. That's our natural inclination is just stop. Let me just stand here and not move another inch. And just be in fear. Like the flight or fight kind of motion. We just, we don't flight. We don't, we just stand there. We don't push forward. But the only thing that can help us to get past the fear is to move. To move and do something. Whatever it may be. You have to go headlong into that fear and push past it. In order to be able to see the other side. Right now, there is going to be, like, yes, there is scary things going on right now. I get it. I know it's hard, and I know that everybody's, like, scared to death to go to the grocery store, or scared to go anywhere because they're afraid they're going to get the virus or whatever. Living in fear doesn't get you anywhere. That doesn't help anything. We have to have faith and trust God for everything. And we have to move past that and then realize that on the other side of this, there is going to be a major boom because everything's going to open back up. People are going, gobs of people are going to get their hair done, their nails done, their feet done. They're like, everything has to be done. Vehicles are going to have to be worked on, but vehicles are going to have to be bought. There's going to be, like right now, tons of houses are being built and that's booming. It's huge. But then more people are going to be building because then they'll have the opportunity to, to be able to do that. Sound like somebody pulling my yard. <laughs> There's just so many things to this moment that we have right now that we need to take advantage of. And there is no reason for us not to take advantage of, of this moment while we are being here and being still and being quiet. Be quiet in your, in your own mind and allow God to speak to you and allow him, just, just ask him and say, God, take all the stuff. Just make it a level playing field. Take anything about the virus, anything about work and money. Take all of that. Just make it, it's balance. It's, it just is. This is just what it is at the moment. Now show me what I do with this. Do I need to be afraid of it? Or do I need to figure out how to be positive with this? He will show you. And of course, he's not going to tell you to be fearful. He tells us not to be afraid. 
Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. God is going to take care of you. He's going to take care of everybody. He allows things to happen, yes. But right now we're in a moment of cleansing and it's time for us just to just be. Just be. And it's okay. I want more than 